Zero effort miss. Consider this pursuer and target initially on a collision course with a known time to intercept of two seconds. That means time to go is initially two seconds as shown, and then one second later, and finally one second later the bodies collide. The pursuer did not maneuver throughout, so its effort or its acceleration was zero. The miss that resulted is also zero because the pursuer and target were initially on a collision course. So we say that the zero effort miss is zero. Now consider that the pursuer is not on a collision course. It has some heading error, and we happen to know for this heading error that the time to intercept or the time to the miss distance is 1.4 seconds. Time to go then 1.4 seconds and one second later. And then another second later, the bodies cross paths. But if we rewind 0.6 seconds to time to go equals zero, we have the miss distance vector. Zero effort miss is the miss distance that results when the pursuer and target continue without maneuver. Here's our engagement diagram. Pursuer having some heading there, target constant velocity along a certain trajectory from this present kinematic state. At a future point in time, there is a missed distance vector. That missed distance vector occurs at time to go equals zero, and is simply the relative separation between the pursuer and target, and also the zero effort miss vector. It's zero effort miss in particular because the pursuer did not accelerate at all to correct the heading there. It simply went along its current trajectory. Mathematically, we can represent zero effort miss in terms of its x and z components. The subscript x denotes the component along the i direction, and t with respect to p is target with respect to pursuer. Let's focus on the x component for a moment. The first term, target with respect to pursuer range vector x component, so that would be the horizontal component of this purple vector here, and then relative velocity of target with respect to pursuer. So summing these two vectors, we have a relative velocity vector, again, aligned with the i direction here, then multiplying by time to go and adding to the initial range in the horizontal direction gives the horizontal component of the zero effort miss vector. A similar interpretation can be made for the vertical component of the zero effort miss. It will be important to determine the zero effort miss normal to the direction of the line of sight. So here's an inertial frame. Here's a hypothetical range vector. Line of sight, angle. And attached to the range vector now, which is along the line of sight direction, we're going to put a line of sight frame denoted with the cursive subscript L. With I direction is aligned with the line of sight direction and the K direction is normal to it. So suppose at some future point in time, there is a zero effort miss vector, which we translate to the current range vector. And then we want to get that component of the zero effort miss from the inertial frame into the line of sight frame. So we can do this with a simple direction cosine matrix. It depends on the line of sight angle. And then we can take the two component, the Z component of that zero effort miss vector resolved in the line of sight frame, this frame here, to get the zero effort miss perpendicular to the line of sight. If lambda or the line of sight angle is small, as in the linearized engagement, then the zero effort miss normal to the line of sight angle simplifies. Here's a linearized engagement where the pursuer and target are on a nearly head-on collision and the range vector is the closing velocity multiplied by time to go. The relative vertical separation is denoted z the dashed black line connecting pursuer and target is the line of sight direction, giving the line of sight angle when referenced to a horizontal plane. Now, at time to go equals zero, 
these bodies will come together in the horizontal direction, leaving some vertical distance between them. That distance is the zero effort miss, in particular because the pursuer and target did not maneuver throughout their motion. Because line of sight angle lambda is assumed small, zero effort miss for the linearized engagement is approximated to be purely in the z direction perpendicular to the line of sight. That means that ZEM perpendicular to the line of sight is the present vertical separation plus the relative velocity multiplied by time to go. This formula for zero effort miss may be familiar from our linearized pronav. Recall from section three, module one, we obtain the line of sight rate as follows. In the numerator note, that it's simply the zero effort miss normal to the line of sight. And now substituting that lambda dot back into the true pronav law, we have true pronav as a function of zero effort miss perpendicular to the line of sight and time to go. Before proceeding further, check your understanding by answering these questions. As an exercise, let's revisit our engagement of the accelerating target where the pursuer and target are initially on a head-on collision. Compute zero effort miss to collision, and then interpret the engagement through the evolution of zero effort miss. For further information, see Zarkan. This was zero effort miss in Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Section 4, Module 3.